Life is hectic. Some days are just a blur. We're Jay and Laura LaFoon, and we help busy couples stay married for life. Welcome to the Married for Life podcast. I'm so excited because this weekend we get to head to Myrtle Beach, South Carolina. Woohoo! We're there for the whole weekend. We're there with the church out of Greensboro, North Carolina. This was, do you remember this was the one that last time we did this retreat for them a couple years ago? So we're at Myrtle Beach. We're from Michigan. We're in the South. We're like, hey, let's go for a walk. So we walked. Myrtle Beach has a amusement boardwalk. area, boardwalk thing. So we walked the beach down there thinking, you know, because we could see the Ferris wheel from where we were. <laughs> We could see it. We didn't realize how so big it was. So it makes you think it's just like a mile or two away. Um, I think we walked a total of 20 miles that day because we walked the beach a lot longer than we thought it was going to take. And then we're like, well, let's walk the road home and look at the houses. And by the time, we had no clue how long it was going to take us. I think it, I think my, I think we walked 10 miles, not 20. I think it was 10 miles both ways. No. You don't think so? No. I can't remember what my fit I can said. tell you what we would do now. <laughs> we'll We'd take hire, an Uber. Hire an Uber. <laughs> But that was it was fun. Myrtle Beach was a fun place to go. We had some good barbecue. So hey, I'm looking forward to it. And fun. this church was a lot of fun. They like to shoot guns. Oh, that's right. Which we like to shoot yeah, guns they, too. They did go on a little excursion and shoot guns. Maybe we'll do that with them this year. That would be fun. That. We love shooting guns. We went guns. and walked the beach instead and ended up, you know, whatever. <laughs> was stranded. <laughs> stranded. It was a long walk. So just the the lesson here for listeners is just because you can see something doesn't mean it's close. <laughs> It can be five miles away. That's right. <laughs> so we've got a, 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 a little email here from Rick. Um, Rick says, both my wife and I were married once prior, and both were ended due to a spouse's infidelity. That is tough. I'm sure that hurt created some walls. However, I believe a biggest mountain is that we were both single for many years, and we were both good at being single. <laughs> I, I I don't know if I would be good at being single, honey. Uh, now now it's learning not only to lose ourselves, but to do it without defensiveness, hesitation, or as a point for me. Um, thank you, Rick, for your honesty. I think that is a situation that that um, I believe he's 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 answering a question that we like to ask people: is what is your greatest challenge in marriage? And, you know, we would just say to you listeners, if you have a greatest challenge, uh, you know, send us send us your greatest challenge at podcast at jayandlaura.com. We would love to answer your questions like we will hopefully help Rick here. Um, because what he's saying is true. They were both married before, both divorced because of infidelity. So there's hurt, there's mistrust. Um, oh, there's deep hurt. Yeah. Coming out of that, and then being single and being good at it. <laughs> now you're married again, right? <laughs> you got to make it. You want to make it work this time, and so it does take a lot of trusting again. Even though this spouse isn't the one that hurt you, there's always there's always I would in the think back of your mind. Sure, in the back of your mind that not only not only trusting, but then learning to uh, live with this person, give to this person, and and be what what they need you to be as a spouse. Um, Rick, we will uh, continue to pray for you um, so that you can can learn how but to do I think, this. Yeah, I think I think also you shouldn't be afraid to get help because if if you are divorced because of infidelity, there was obviously deep hurt, mistrust, and maybe you know we're big we're big proponents of therapy, and if if you need to go see a counselor in order to deal with those feelings of mistrust, because you've got to learn to trust this spouse. Um, and not put your past baggage onto this spouse, and but learning to deal with that, I think therapy is always a good a good way to do that. Um, and then, yeah, like you said, losing yourself, realizing that you know just because you're giving up some not giving up, what's the word? Losing yourself doesn't mean that the spouse is going to hurt you hurt you in the way that one before did. So, yeah. So today we're going to talk about the fact that you gotta like your spouse. Not only you gotta love them, but you gotta like them. And unfortunately, busy, busy couples can still be best friends. That's right. Just because you're busy doesn't mean you can't still be best friends. And trust us, there are going to be days where you don't like them because they do some. I like you every day. No, you don't. There's moments. I love you every day. Yes, there you go. But you I don't like you every day. Right, right. <laughs> but busy couples can still be best friends by having fun. Remembering to have fun. F U N. So that's gonna be our acronym today. Is fun and um. The, the first, the F, the F in fun is to find. Find. Com- find commonalities. Mm-hmm. You know, find things 
that you two enjoy doing together. Uh, it was and this isn't going to happen overnight. No. This has been a process in our marriage of finding things that we enjoy. Well, because we are together all the time. We know, work together. We, we sleep together. We exercise together. We do everything together. And apparently this is what I <laughs> asked the Lord for. Are you? Are we boring you? No. <laughs> I, I prayed long and hard. Lord, give me a woman who I can spend 24 hours a day with, seven but days a week. seriously, <laughs> finding those activities that you both enjoy doing we've we've always enjoyed exercising together even though we exercise differently um we've kind of blended those for years we ran and now we're just too old to do that anymore but jay would always run the first mile with me then he would run faster for the second mile then he would catch back up with me so we did it together but yet we did it separately as well so finding those things that you can do together we've always golfed together i had to learn to play golf i wasn't a golfer but that's something that we do together and then then i would say in the last five years we've discovered that we enjoy cooking together Woo-hoo. we really enjoy cooking yep. together and and uh we also love to travel people find that interesting because we travel for a living but we do we enjoy going places discovering new places and uh and enjoying that and so for you and your spouse the, the question is what can you find that you can do together? We were very encouraged. Our, our son and his wife, they've been married uh, six be years. Six years this summer. This summer will be six years. And uh, had a phone call from them. They had just gotten away for the weekend. And finding they, they've discovered that they like to travel together. Mm-hmm. They love to get away for a short weekend. doesn't have to be expensive. It can be super cheap. Um, but you get away and you get ahead. They live in the great state of Texas. And so they're going to now discover... Texas. What they can discover in Texas and taking some weekend road tips, trips to see what there is. So wherever you live, we love we love traveling in Michigan in the summertime because there are just beautiful parts of Michigan in both winter and summer. Um, but, yeah. but going to it's still pretty outside, even though the snow's on the ground. It's cold. But, but visiting those places in Michigan that we enjoy visiting and doing some of those things together. So finding those things that you do together, finding the commonalities, find what it is that you would enjoy doing together, and then here's the big thing. You can't just find them. You got to make it a priority. You got to put it on the calendar. You got to make a date. You know, hey, this weekend in June, we're going to go up north and we're going to, you know, do wine tasting, whatever it might be. Um, But putting it on the calendar, making it a priority so that you make sure that you have that time together helps you have fun. And we've discovered the first F is for finding commonality. Yes, helping busy couples put fun back in their marriage. Hi, everyone. This is Paul Thomas, Director of Live Events here at Celebrate Ministries. Jay and Laura are talking about having fun as a couple on today's podcast, and we have some ways that you can create some fun as a couple. If you're an adventure seeker, we want to invite you to celebrate your marriage at sea this July as Jay and Laura set sail on the Norwegian Joy heading to Alaska and the Pacific Northwest. Sailing out of Seattle on July 13th and returning to port on July 20th, you will get seven nights of a bucket list adventure. Along the way, you're going to enjoy relaxation, amazing sights, and you're going to hear teachings from Jay and Laura, as well as guest speaker Sarah Beckman. If visiting Alaska is something that you have always wanted to do as a couple, we encourage you to act now, as our room block is going to expire in less than 25 days. If you're already looking forward to spring and you want a chance to slow down and get away as a couple before the summer starts, then Mackinac Island will be the place to be on May 19th and 20th as Celebrate Your Marriage takes place at Historic and Romantic Grand Hotel. Jay and Laura will welcome America's Got Talent finalist and sand artist Joe Castillo to the conference, and special guests Keith and Chandra Rushing will lead sessions during our special VIP experience, which will take place on May 20th and 21st. Now, you can find out more about Celebrate Your Marriage at Sea and Celebrate Your Marriage at Grand Hotel by visiting jayandlaura.com. The Ultimate Nate Date Night, he said, she said, winter tour is underway, and Jay and Laura are going to be in Cleveland, Ohio, and State College, Pennsylvania in March. And then they're also going to be in Springfield, Missouri, and Joplin, Missouri for a pair of events. Now, you can get tickets to an event near you. You can see where Jay and Laura are going by visiting jayandlaura.com. And if you're interested in bringing Jay and Laura to your city or your church, please let us know. We're now booking events into 2020. You can email us at podcast at jayandlaura.com for more information. Now, let's get back to Jay and Laura LaFou. So today we're helping busy couples stay happily married for life by remembering... 
to put fun in your marriage because you got to like this person that you're hanging out with. Friendship. I mean, when you when you were dating, you did stuff together, right? I mean, because that's what you did when you're dating, whether you went to car shows or you went to movies or went for walks in the park and you had fun together. And so keeping busy couples happily married for life involves having fun. And in the first part of this podcast, we talked about the F standing for finding commonalities. So the word fun, F is for finding commonalities, and the U is for? Well, I, back to back up just before we get to the U. I think when early on in relationships, we lie to each other. Oh, I love going to the mall, honey. Nah, it's never, never. It's true. You hate going to the mall, but and, you never said that. But I never said that because she wanted to go to the mall. I want to make her happy. Um, what's something that. So I don't think it's lying. That's a harsh word to say lying. Oh, what is it then? <laughs> you just you were you were giving over what you wanted to do for the sake of me. There you go. You were loving there. That's what it is. Instead oh, of lying, loving that lying. lying. So how did you love me back in the day? I didn't lie to you. Yes, you did. What did I say? I you enjoyed? gave me a whole jar of green M and M's. That I did. <laughs> yes, she did. And if now, you don't the, know what those <laughs> see, green M and M's back in the day. Well, we're supposedly make you horny. And so when this beautiful woman gave me a... She, 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 knows, she was lying. She was lying. She was like... I think like you've said before, I was then. <laughs> <laughs> yes, okay, pray, let's pray for right me. Okay, let's move right along. The F is for finding... I haven't had a green M&M in decades. The F is for finding commonalities. The U in the word fun is for uninterrupted time together. This is a drum we're going to keep beating, folks, because it's one of the most important things you can do for your marriage. And there are times, I think, I mean, there are. It's just when you have children in your home, you're going to have fun as a family. You're going to do those family activities, whether it's get away for the weekend to the beach or you're going to go outside and play, you know, wiffle ball. That's what we used to do with our kids, play wiffle ball or basketball. You're going to have those times together as family. That is going to be fun. And you and your spouse are going to have fun doing that. But you have to have time. That's just for you and your spouse, especially without the kids when you have kids in your home. You have to have that uninterrupted time together for just the two of you. And you can be creative. You know, put the kids in bed at 8 o'clock at night and get on Netflix and watch a movie together and pop some popcorn. However you want to do that. Um, but being creative with your uninterrupted time together is how you put that fun back in your marriage. Well, and it, and it does just a number of things for you in your relationship when you have that uninterrupted time. Number one, it lets you focus on each other. Mm -hmm. which is key, crucial. Number two, it, it really opens up communication lines, makes communicating easier um, because you're not you're not running around going, you didn't tell me that, you didn't tell me that, you never tell me, you know, all that kind of stuff. And honestly, it, it draws you closer. So it, it, it makes you closer as a, as a couple, which is wonderful because it can lead to some wonderfully great intimacy. So we want to make sure that you do have time together with your family, with your kids, together as husband and wife. Um, you know, doing those things together as a family, but also really making uninterrupted time for yourselves a priority. And like we've said before, and like Jay said, we're going to beat this drum. You can talk about doing something, but until you actually put it on the calendar and make it a priority, it's not going to happen. Just because you say, oh, next Friday, let's go on a date. Let's go up here and go out to dinner. And then we'll go, maybe we'll walk around Home Depot and think of things we want to do to the house. That's a great date, but if you don't put it on the calendar and put the logistic logistical stuff in process to make that happen, it won't happen. So really making that uninterrupted time a priority. And, and finally, the N. F is for finding commonalities. U is for uninterrupted time together. And the N is very simple. Never quit growing. Never quit growing. Find conferences. Find uh, books to read. Find stuff that you invest in your marriage because when you invest in your marriage, you're going to reap great dividends. I love it when older folks come to our date nights. Um, it's just, they're so cute. We were at one in Ohio. I can't remember where it was, oh, really? but um, we were in the, the, the high school Cafe Gymnasiatorium. <laughs> it, was it was one of those. It was one of those. <laughs> Had a stage and then a gym floor and then bleachers. And the place was packed, full house. Uh, probably four or five hundred people, but in the bleachers there was this elderly couple. Had to be in their eighties, and um, and you could just see them because the lights from the uh -huh. that were in the balcony there was they were like sitting right underneath. Right underneath one. Like it was a, like a like, spotlight right, spotting. Like, them. Right, they were like right underneath a, a can light, and it, it showed them. And I'm telling you what, um, they were all over each other. It was amazing. Um, they were, you know, happily 
touching each other in very... It uh, was appropriate it was a, for being well, in public. Yeah, he was grabbing her backside, okay? <laughs> well, that was when they were dancing. Right. And um, so, I, you know, it was great because, I mean, literally in their 80s. And uh, after afterward, we're signing books. And this 80-year-old man, he literally hops over the railing and comes up to me. And I said, buddy, I saw what you were doing up there. And he said, that's what keeps me young. And his wife, uh, she didn't hop over the railing, but she came around. And I said, I saw what he was doing with you. And she said, that's what keeps him young. And I'm like, I want a little dose of that, please. But then he gave you a very uh, astute thought yes. to share with married couples. And he said this, you got to remind the young people that what you did to get her is what you got to do to keep her. And so it was just really funny that it, this goes back to that dating, you know, whatever you did, gentlemen. Um, and that's why we're all Green about... Green M&M's. <laughs> that's why we're all about the fun that never quit growing. Life is cumulative. Learn a new hobby. Um, read books. Keep learning. Um, I learned, I recently, well, I guess I'd say in the past two years, you know, those um, painting classes are very popular. And even in our small town in Michigan here, they're very popular. So I started taking painting classes when I could. Just, you know, the ones that, hey, we're going to paint this picture tonight. And you go and you paint this pumpkin. You know, it was pumpkin that was the first one. And I really enjoy, I really found that I enjoy painting. So I got myself some paints and some canvases. And that's what I do on nights that we're home is I go upstairs to our library and paint while Jay's reading. And so learning those, having those new hobbies that maybe you take up trying to learn or new Or a things. new habit. You know, like gentlemen opening the door for your wife or... Uh, I remember a habit I started years ago was making the bed, and then I found out I was doing it wrong. Exactly. How, how do you how do you make a bed wrong? Getting it the pillows on the right. Didn't way. have the pillows in the right <laughs> order. There's an order for the pillows. I'm I'm just amazed. Uh, but yeah, it was uh, uh, learn a new habit and and bless your wife with that new habit. So keeping that friendship alive, realizing that you like each other, involves fun, finding commonalities uninterrupted time together and never quit growing. Hey, thanks for joining us. We ask that you would, if you've enjoyed this podcast, that you would rate us, that you would share us um, and let us know that you like us because we're all about helping busy couples stay married for life.